Good evening everyone from Athens, Greece. We're here at the EC Heart Failure Meeting. Uh, my name is Rudolf de Boer from Groningen, the Netherlands. I'm here with Carolyn Lam from Singapore. Great that you're here. Uh, it's the second full day of the yep. meeting. Um, it's the end of the day, so we're still awake, but we're <laughs> somewhat exhausted, right? There's been, there's been so much to share. Yeah, it's been exciting. Uh, maybe, Caroline, can you tell us what, what sessions did you attend today? Well, I couldn't be at the Late Breakers, but I think I'd like to start there because I was very excited about the presentation of the stroke results of the Commander trial. So as a reminder to everybody, the Commander trial was a prospective randomized control trial, a very large one, of rivaroxaban, 2.5 milligrams twice daily on top of standard of care in patients with worsening chronic heart failure reduced ejection fraction and coronary artery disease and in sinus rhythm. Mm -hmm. And if everyone remembers, that was actually a neutral trial yeah, on the nice. primary outcome of all-cause mortality, MI and stroke. However, you know, this was really overshadowed by the fact that these were very recently hospitalized patients. They were admitted within 21 days, and so there's a lot of deaths. And so to, to offer some kind of insight into why we got a neutral result there versus the very strongly positive results in Compass, for example, um, we looked at strokes. And so this was presented by Dr. Matha Muthu uh, Vaduganathan uh, mm -hmm. on behalf of the commander um, um, investigators. And basically, it showed, first of all, uh, there was a high rate of strokes. There were 150 events over a median follow-up of 21 months. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of peaked at six months, continued throughout, and these were severe. Half of them were this modified Rantin score, at least three and above, so severe or fatal. Yeah, disabling stroke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so first message, these people are at high risk of stroke. Without right. AF, remember, um, heart mm -hmm. failure reduced, ejection fraction, coronary okay. artery disease, and sinus rhythm. Right. And the addition of low-dose rivaroxaban prevented a stroke. And it was a reduction, a relative risk reduction of 31%. Uh, with a number needed to treat of 164 per yeah. year. Yeah, so, so clearly a signal there, and yeah. I agree with you, it's probably the end point that one could expect to be mostly affected by river oxygen, right? Rather yeah. than a heart failure real situation. Yeah. Well, we were chatting right. and a few people were saying, well, that's a big number needed to treat. Yeah. So the investigators did go further to see were there a high-risk group, and so they found that those with a CHADS vast score more than four, mm -hmm. uh, if you limit it to that, then the number needed to treat falls under 100. So, okay. very yeah. interesting results. No, How about you? It is. Um, also went to a, um, a lot of sessions. Um, um, there was a lot of attention for comorbidities in general, uh, diabetes. There were multiple sessions yes. on SDL2 inhibitors. Uh, there's also a, 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 a guidance update being published today by HFA that, that, that in part also summarizes some of these data. I think um, what is interesting now in this guidance uh, um, document there's more attention for STL2 inhibitors. It's very clear there's no data in prevalent heart failure. The trials are ongoing and we all wait for this. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, these data are eagerly awaited. But I think there is, there is now good data to show that in high risk populations, so patients with diabetes or other uh, history of cardiovascular disease, that there is a very strong and consistent signal that it prevents new onset heart failure. Yeah. Well, we're all heart failure dogs, so we do care about patients not developing heart failure. Yeah. So, so uh, I think there is, a, there is more and more consensus that these drugs uh, really do have a, a beneficial effect to prevent new onset heart failure. So, so first of all, congratulations, Rudolf, because I know you were one of the co-authors. I was and one this, of them. Yeah, this was like it came out simultaneously today yeah. and was mentioned in several sessions that I was at as well. So a, a really great paper, European Journal Heart Failure today, right? Today, and actually yeah. there's there's a number of papers that are being simultaneously published in uh, European Journal of Heart Failure, yeah. but people like to see like to see the full the full paper. Yeah. Another topic, for example, that is also touched upon in this paper, and there was a. a, a very interesting uh, session was uh, the mitra clip. Uh, clearly, now we have two trials, one being rather neutral, the mitra in yeah. uh, France. The co opt was much more favorable, so, so we're somewhat stuck in the middle. Uh, there's another one, another large trial ongoing, so, so we also have to wait for that. So, so there's a lot of 
uh, new things that are also uh, in, in brief uh, discussed in this paper and, mm -hmm. and, and that deserve this, uh, the, the attention over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, I wanted to pick up on the SGLT2 inhibitors because um, the HFA president at the moment, uh, Dr. Professor Petar Seferovic, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, like he gave a really great talk today on SGLT2 inhibitors and the emerging treatments for HEPFEP session. So it's interesting because this is now exiting the world of endocrine and diabetes. It is, yeah. A big buzz in a heart failure congress. And, um, you know, everybody should look out for the trials because it's going into HEPPEF, a heart failure trial, in those even without diabetes. And right. I think that's the real catcher here. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a drug that might be used by doctors, cardiologists, nephrologists, caring for patients with end organ disease. This is, gonna, this is likely going to be um, uh, irrespective of the presence or absence of diabetes, very, very, and any more uh, interesting uh, targets that you heard of for, for HEFPEF? Oh, for the HEFPEF world. Well, uh, not results, but sort of very hopeful trials that mm -hmm. are ongoing now. Um, so Dr. Lars Lund gave a great talk on mineral corticoid receptor antagonists and the first, in my knowledge, registry-based randomized control trial of spironolactone. So the spirit trial is ongoing. That one's very important. Um, Scott Solomon, of course, built up a story for Paragon. Mm -hmm. And everybody is waiting in anticipation of Paragon results. So Sacubitro Valsartan in HEPPEF. Um, uh, Professor Burkut Piska talked about the soluble guanine cyclase stimulator, so very sigwat. And so that is being tested in the Vitality trial. Vitality trial being very unique because it's the first HEFPEF trial powered on the outcome of patient reported outcomes. Right. And then, oh, devices. Let's not forget devices. So Dr. Bill Abraham from the United States uh, talked about the interatrial shunts. Yeah. You know, that one was yeah. first met with a bit of skepticism. Yeah. Now yeah. there's more and more momentum. Yeah. So there are actually two pivotal trials happening yeah. now. And then I talked about SGLT2 inhibitors. And then uh, Professor Stefan van Heeling ended the session talking about intravenous iron in the fair HEPTEF trial. So quite a lot of stuff quite happening in this space. So I think Paragon is likely going to be presented in EC Paris, right? In a couple yes. of months from now. So maybe then we should extend EC television and... Yes. Hopefully we can discuss a little further. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And thank you very much for uh, watching us. <laughs>